a rare glimpse into how diplomacy works or sometimes does not. Everything we discuss is then leaked to the paper, that's not appropriate. Chinese President Xi Jinping with his interpreter cornered Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on the margins of the G20. And that's not how the way the conversation was conducted. To rebuke him for releasing details to the public about their meeting the day before, Trudeau pushed back. There is sincerity on your part. Free and open and frank dialogue and that is what we will continue to have. We will continue to look to work constructively together, but there will be things we will disagree on. Canada recently launched a new Indo-Pacific strategy that includes a tougher stance on China over human rights concerns. Canada needs to be able to engage uh, constructively and directly on areas we can work together while at the same time we continue to uh, be there to challenge on human rights. But this was hardly the only challenge for the Canadian government on the G20's last day. Leaders woke up to news of Russia's latest attacks on Ukraine and a missile that struck Poland killing two people. Trudeau was summoned to an emergency G7 and NATO meeting. He and the British Prime Minister also spoke to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and his foreign minister. The reason Ukraine is having to use missiles is to defend its homeland. Both leaders placed blame at Russia's feet. This is in the context of massive illegal missile strikes uh, by, uh, by Russia on uh, civilians in Ukraine. Ultimately, G20 leaders issued a statement noting most members condemned the war but did not name the ones who did not. Trudeau will bring the conflict up again at the APEC summit in Thailand, but Xi Jinping is also expected to attend, meaning Trudeau may well need to make room for more surprises on his agenda. Rafa Bujikan, CBC News, Bali, Indonesia.